Hi everyone, welcome to another video created by me, Zan Ta. Today's Autodesk screencast focuses on some of the new features of Revit 2017. This will be one of many videos, so be on the lookout for additional videos in this series. Enjoy! Here I am in Revit 2017, and I'd like to cover some of the enhancements that they've made to the MEP aspects of the software. As most of you may know, in Revit 2016 R2, they introduced better fabrication capability. So for those who are not aware, <clears throat> Autodesk has a series of fabrication software called Fabrication CAD MEP, Duct MEP, and EST MEP that allows you to create fabrication shop level drawings of your Revit model. Uh, your Revit model. And so for the purposes of the improvements of the software from an MEP standpoint, uh, you'll notice that this design intent model just has standard Revit MEP ductwork in it. <clears throat> it used to be such that you could um, select the object and try to change it to a MEP fabrication based object, but it was a little cumbersome and difficult to do. <clears throat> Now, in Revit 2017, you can tab the entire series, if you will, and they have this Design to Fabrication command in the ribbon. If I click it, what ends up happening is it'll ask me to select the fabrication service to use. I'll pick the one that I want, click OK, <clears throat> and it will automatically convert all of them to fabrication parts. Now, obviously there's a little warning here because there's some connections that are not functioning, but we'll address that in one second. If I go over to the Systems tab of the Ribbon, Fabrication Panel, you can see there's a little arrowhead for Fabrication Settings. If I select it, you'll notice that there is a Fabrication Configuration window that I can pick the type that I want to work with, and I can load in any services that I need to. Since I've already loaded them, I don't have to worry about loading them again, but I can also just click Reload if I need to, and it'll allow me to load that data in. <clears throat> Once the fabrication database configuration files have been loaded properly, you can then start using those objects within the software. And you'll notice, again, these objects are now actual MEP fabrication parts. I can click um, fabrication part command and it will open up the MEP fabrication parts panel. It will list the service and the group and the types of objects to be able to work with. I can very quickly and easily select any piece if I need to and click optimize length and it will adjust them and redesign them to uh, if you will proper manufacturing part lengths. So we'll do that over here as well. And then you'll notice as well that we've got a design situation here that we need to correct. I can select the object, and if I need to, I can actually use a new feature called Route and Fill. What this allows me to do is tell it to connect to another endpoint node, if you will, of another MEP fabrication part, and it will figure out what part to put in. Um, I have multiple solutions available, and if I do, I can use the arrows to jump from one solution to another. I can click the green check mark to accept that piece and it will finish it. Or I can click the green check mark in the contextual ribbon. Uh, another feature that they've enhanced is obviously not just the um, catalog of information that's being inputted to have more data available for you to work with, but it used to be set up such that if you had a piece that was running this way, you had another MEP fabrication piece that was running this way, you couldn't use the trim or extend command to bring them together. But now you can. I could just use TR as my keyboard shortcut and click the two and now they're connected with an actual part that is a fabrication part. And again, you can select multiple parts if you need to and click optimize length. So you're really starting to get a better handle on the MEP fabrication features of fabrication CAD MEP, SMEP, and duct MEP capability within Revit 2017. And with that, um, let's jump over to another feature that they have improved in the Revit, Revit 2017 software, and that has to do with hangers. So let's open up a file.
and you'll notice in this particular file we've got some hangers that we're working with <clears throat> and if I orbit it a little bit you'll notice that I can now place a hanger and have it hosted by another hanger. I can also select a particular hanger and I've got these little arrow grips here that I can click and drag to adjust the length of the actual hanger horizontal member on either side. <clears throat> when you're working with the hanger if you select the little node grip if you will for the drag rod um, you can click and pull it out and adjust it if you need to or put it back to that particular member. And there is also another feature where if you are selecting say the duct work like this member here and I go to move this member I can move it without a problem if let's try another member over here let's look at this one if I select this and I move this it's going to move everything um, this warning is because of the hanger that's earlier that you saw earlier over here if I select this particular hanger um, you can notice that again I can pull that end but there's also going to be little locking symbols that you can lock or unlock and what that does is let's say right now it's locked so if I unlock this and I decide to move this member that end is going to move that doesn't look like it did anything but if I grab and pull it'll adjust if I grab and pull um, this arrowhead here and pull that makes the adjustment and then if I move the duct to my right or left you'll notice that this particular rod since it was unlocked doesn't hold a relationship to this duct it stays put and now the gap is here whereas this one it actually is locked so if I move this duct back this particular duct stays in relationship a uh, rod stays in relationship to this duct so that's what this lock and unlock feature does. And so if I lock this again and I move the duct, you'll notice both rods will move because both are connected. There are other types of MEP enhancements that they've done more on the calculations and loading uh, aspects of the software. And then lastly, um, some additional computation capability as well. Uh, thank you very much for watching this screencast video on what's new in Revit 2017 for the MEP improvements. And I hope to hear from you guys again and do another video on other types of what's new features in Revit 2017.